What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux Anywhere using the Arch Anywhere ISO. So first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the website arch-anywhere.org. Um, come on over here and you go to the download page and you can find the latest torrent and the latest direct download right here. Um, I suggest going ahead and getting the torrent if possible, um, otherwise there's the direct download as well. Um, so go ahead and grab the ISO and at that point you can either write it to a USB or a CD um, or you can do what I'm going to be doing today is boot up VirtualBox. So I got my virtual system right here, Arch Anywhere, and I got the ISO in the system ready to go. So let's boot it up. Alright, so here's the boot screen. We're going to see Arch Linux Anywhere and we have the 64-bit, the 32-bit boot existing OS. We have mem test and um, hardware information in here. Um, so we're going to go ahead with the 64-bit option. Alright, so it's going to go ahead and boot up. You're going to see some stuff scroll by on the screen here. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. We'll be right back when we get booted up. Alright, so once you get up and running, you're going to be at a screen like this. It's going to say, Welcome to Arch Linux Anywhere. Bring you Arch Linux whenever and wherever you need it. Um, it's going to have a list of options here. So we have option one, which is the Arch installer. So you can type one or Arch dash anywhere to begin the install. Um, and then we have two, which is the Arch wiki. Um, so you can load up the Arch wiki from the command line here and you can search for whatever you want. Um, so that's option two. Uh, we have option three, which is test your connection. Option four, which shows detailed system information. Option five, which is update your mirror list. And option six, and these also all have corresponding commands as seen over in the right column. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the install. So we're gonna go ahead and just type arch anywhere, or I could just type one, it would do the same thing arch anywhere so now we're in the installer so first you're going to choose your language so we'll go with English would you like to be in the install yes okay now you're going to select your key map all the other key maps are right over here so you, there's a full list of key maps here to choose from um, default is the same as US so I'm just going to go with default Okay, now you're going to select your locale. Again, there's a full list here of all the locales in other down here at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go with the US. Okay, so now you're going to do your time zone. Um, you can also type the letter that you're looking for. So, for example, I want to go to US. I just type U. And it takes me down to US here. Okay, Eastern. Alright, now it's going to ask me what method of partitioning I want to use. So manual partitioning will give you this full menu and you can uh, set up the partition scheme yourself and partition the drive yourself. All your drives and partitions will be shown in here. Um, auto partition will take a drive and format it and create a partition scheme and then mount it and that's where it will install Arch. Um, same with auto partition encrypted. It'll format the entire drive, but it'll create an encrypted partition scheme. So if you want to do an encrypted install, it encrypts the entire install, uh, except for the boot partition. It doesn't encrypt the boot partition, but it encrypts the entire root partition. Okay, so we're just going to do auto partition drive for this. So this will give you a list of all your drives. I have a 10 gig virtual drive, so I'm going to select that. Uh, there's options for file systems. Default is ext4, so I'm going to go with that. Okay. Would you like to create a swap space? So this is a virtual area of space on your drive um, to act as virtual RAM. Um, if your system consumes too much memory, it'll write to the swap file. Um, so if you have less RAM in your system, you want typically to set a bigger swap file. If you have two gigs of RAM, you definitely want at least a 2 gig swap file. Um, so I'm going to go with the default, which is 512 megs. I'm not too worried. I'm not going to be using the system. Okay, GPT partitioning. We're going to go with no, not necessary. And 
check over everything to make sure it looks all right and write changes. So it's going to format and then it's going to partition. It's going to create the file system. And it's going to mount. And now it's going to give us the option of what type of install we want to do. So we have base and base development. So base is just a base Arch Linux install. This is base development is a base Arch Linux install install with development packages. So that's most likely the one you're going to want to go with. There's GRSEC, which is the uh, security hardened kernel. So it's an extra secure Linux. And then there's long-term support base kernel and long-term support kernel base development packages. So we're going to go with the regular uh, stable Arch kernel with base development. Um, now you're going to choose your shell. So there's quite a few different options for shells here. They all come uh, with a configuration file. They've been slightly pre-configured. Um, I'm going to go with ZSH. It's my favorite shell, so I'm going to go ahead and select ZSH. Select your bootloader. Um, so you can either go with Grub or None. If you're using EFI boot, you can. Uh, SysLinux is also an option if you're using ES EFI boot. So we're going to go with Grub. Okay, select your network utility. So there's Net Control and Network Manager. Um, if you're using a GUI, um, I'd go with Network Manager. It's got a nice GUI management interface. Um, so I'm going to go with that. Install wireless utilities, so if you're using Wi-Fi, you're going to want to install this so you can connect to Wi-Fi after the install. I'm going to go with no because I'm not. Um, PPPoE connection, I'm not using that. OS Prober, which is required if you're dual booting, which I'm not. Okay, and now it's going to ask me if I'd like to install a desktop or window manager, so I'm going to go with yes. So there's quite a large selection of uh, desktops and window managers to choose from here. I probably have about 16, 16 or 17, I think 16 different ones to choose from here. Um, so quite a large selection here. I'm going to go with the Arch Anywhere XFCE, which is my pre-configured XFCE4 desktop. There's also a regular XFCE. Um, that's also an option, and there's quite every desktop and window manager in between. So we're going to go with Arch Anywhere XFCE. So it detected that I'm using VirtualBox, um, so it's going to provide the guest utils. Um, at this point, if you're not using VirtualBox, it, it would ask you to select your graphics drivers, and you can go from there and select whatever graphics drivers for your uh, computer. So we're going to hit OK, so it's going to install that for us. Now this is for if you have a laptop with a touchpad, you're going to want to select yes here. We don't have that, so no. Light DM Display Manager is a graphical login manager, so it'll give you a graphical interface to log into rather than just logging into the command line. So we'll go with yes there. Okay, so now it's going to give us all our packages here, give us the download size, the estimated install time, and our estimated speed here. So now we can go ahead and just hit install, and it's going to begin installing Arch to the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it for this, and we'll be right back. Alright, so now it's installing Grub, configuring Grub. Setting the locale, time zone, enabling network manager and light DM, virtual box service. All right. So now it's, it detected that we're using 64-bit, and it wants to add the multi-lib repos to the Pac-Man config. Um, so that'll allow you to install multi-lib packages, 32-bit um, software in a 64-bit system, basically. Yes, there. Enable DHCP at boot, so that'll automatically assign an IP address when you boot up, so you won't have to configure your IP yourself. Um, so we're going to go with yes there. Make it easy. Okay, set your host name. Arch Anywhere is the default. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to set Arch Anywhere. Okay, set a root password. You want to set typically a strong password here. It's the root administrator password. 
create a new user. So yes, we'll go ahead and create a user now. So you set your username here. And again, go ahead and set your user password. Okay, enable sudo privileges. So that'll give you the ability to use the sudo command to administer your system. So we're gonna add yes there. Okay, and that's gonna say, would you like to install some common software? So we're gonna hit yes. And it's gonna give us this list of software. Um, so these are all, these all have sub lists. So these are so types of software and they contain sublists. So this is the Arch Anywhere repository. So this is the custom repository. So it'll ask you, would you like to add the custom repository to your configuration? So we can hit yes and we can install a couple custom packages here, including a couple um, AUR front ends that have been much requested. So we'll install Yoward and a couple other of my utilities I've written. Audio software, um, quite a few different games, um, graphics software, internet software. I'm going to go ahead and get Firefox just just for the hell of it. Okay. Um, multimedia software, simple screen recorder is what I'm using to record this video. Office, so LibreOffice and all that. Um, quite a few different terminal emulators to choose from. Text editors, I always get Vim, so go ahead and grab Vim. And it will add the package to the list, and you install all of them at the end. Um, and then there's some system utilities or servers and um, different command line utilities, OpenSSH is in here, ScreenFetch, VirtualBox, WGET, system utility type stuff, so add a couple of those. So when you're done, you can go down to done at the bottom or just go over here and hit install. It'll put all the packages together, give you the total size, uh, estimated install time, etc. Hit install. So it's going to go ahead and install all these. I'm going to pause it and we'll be right back. Alright. Now at the end it's going to update your database. This is actually going to take a second because my internet's actually really slow. Um, so I'm going to pause it we'll be right back. Alright, so at the end you're going to be given a, a reboot menu here. You can just go ahead and reboot system. You can power off. You can arch ch root into installed system, which is a feature I wrote. Um, which lets you control the new system. So this is a ILS root. This is actually my new system here. Um, I can use Yaourt to uh, install packages from here just like that. So I can install AUR packages before the system even boots. So I'm not going to do that right now. Exit out of there. Um, we can return to command prompt, add another user, or, or install more software if we'd like. So we're just going to return to command prompt here. Okay, so 14 minutes for the install time, not too bad. Um, so let's go ahead and reboot. Now we can see here my virtual system. Slowly booting back up. So we'll go down here to boot existing OS to boot the OS we just installed. And here we go, here we are at the grub screen of the new system. Let's go ahead and boot it up. And here we are at the uh, light DM login screen. So here we are in the fully installed system, fresh out of the box, first login. So we can open up a terminal, screen fetch. So there's our system specs right there. And it's got a drop down terminal, so if you use control tilde, tilde um, you can 
drop down terminal like that, which is pretty convenient. Nice and easy, just like that. It has the ZSH installed out of the box with uh, syntax highlighting. Um, open up our Firefox web browser right here. out of the box just like that all right so that's the arch anywhere install tutorial tutorial and i hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching